I'm Masaki Kimura from Hitachi. I'm very happy to have this opportunity to talk to you today. You may interrupt me anywhere during my talk, but you will have time for questions at the end of my talk. There is one important thing before we start the presentation. Uh, I'm not a native speaker of English, so please uh, try to ask me questions slowly and clearly in a loud voice. Thank you. Okay, let's start. This is content of my presentation. First, I will share the background, the use cases of study command from test and the requirement from these use cases. Second, I will share KVM features for guest study command, and then I will share the current status of these features. After that, I will share the summary and future work. Okay, let's start from background. Enterprise systems expect that Virtualized environment has the same level of manageability, availability, and reliability achieved in bare metal. For example, thin provision storage for manageability, HA cluster for availability, and backup server for reliability. In bare metal environment, some of these requirements are achieved by using storage features, such as SCSI command. In virtualized environment, the same use cases exist for guests. Therefore, issuing SCSI command from guests are required. I will explain three use cases, thin provision storage, HA cluster, and backup server in the next slide. First use case is thin provision storage. Many types of enterprise storage have thin provision function. For achievement of thin provision, a disk block is allocated. Oh, sorry. This block is allocated on access. However, once it is allocated, it cannot be reclaimed by storage automatically, even when the disk block becomes unused by OS. This is a waste of the disk block because if we can reclaim the disk block, other system can use this disk block. So to, to reclaim unused disk block, OS need to let storage node unused block by issuing write same SCSI command to storage. Once storage can see which is the unused disk block, storage can reclaim the disk field. This use case exists for both bare metal and KVM gas. To achieve this by KVM gas, guest OS needs to issue write same SCSI command to storage. Therefore, write same is required to be issued to storage from guest. Second use case is HA cluster. To improve availability, HA cluster is commonly used in bare metal. For HA cluster, persistent reservation of SCSI command is generally used to guarantee an exclusive access from active system. Please see the left hand side figure. HA cluster is consists of active system and standby system. Once active system fails, it fails over to standby system. Both active system and standby system need to share the data, so they share the same LU. However, standby system must not access while active system is using the data because it might uh, corrupt the data of the LU. So we need an exclusive access from active system. To guarantee an exclusive access, persistent reservation is used. Once 
persistent reservation is held by its active system, the IOs from standby system is blocked by using straight feature. This use case also exists for KVM guest. To achieve HA cluster in the guest OS, guest OS need to issue SCSI command, persistent reservation SCSI command to LU. Therefore, persistent reservation is required to be issued to straight from guest. There is one more requirement from HA cluster. The requirement is IP nexus is required to be unique. Let me explain more. Persistent reservation is held by so-called IP nexus, the combination of initiator ID and target ID. Please see the left-hand side figure. HBA on the server has initiator ID and straight have target ID. By initiator ID and target ID, I mean uh, WWN for fiber channel case and IQN for iSCSI case. Once persistent reservation is issued to straight, straight holds the data of the combination of initiator ID and target ID. In this case, a persistent reservation is issued from initiator one to target A, so straight stores the combination of initiator one and target A. IOs from standby system are blocked because their IP nexus is different. In this case, standby system issues uh, access from initiator two, so the IOs from standby system is blocked. Therefore, IP nexus is required to be unique for persistent reservation to work properly. If standby system share the same initiator ID, standby uh, IOs from standby system is not blocked. And this is not the ex expected uh, behavior. The same thing happened to KVM guests. If you set up a uh, HA cluster between guests, IP nexus required to be unique in this case, so initiator ID across guests should be unique. The third use case is backup server. Persistent reservation is also used by some backup server product to guarantee an exclusive access from a backup server on backup. Therefore, persistent reservation to straight and unique IP nexus are required by these products. Let me explain with these figures. Business systems have a lot of servers and they need backup. To take a backup easily, it is common to use backup server. Backup server shares LUs with business systems. And to take a consistent backup, an exclusive access from backup server is required on backup. To guarantee an exclusive access, persistent reservation is held by backup server. This use case also exists for KVM case. And in this case, all business systems and backup server are in the same server. And persistent reservation need to issue from straight uh, to guest, uh, to straight from guest. And also initiator ID need to be unique. This is summary of the requirement. There are two requirements from three use cases. First requirement is SCSI command to straight from guest because 
simple original trace requires right stem to trace from guest. And ATEC Rasta and Babka server require persistent reservation to trace from guest. Second requirement is unique initiator ID across guest. Because ATEC Rasta and Backup Server require IT nexus to be unique. Okay, let's quickly review which KVM feature have guest SCSI command. This presentation focuses on following three device types and their configuration. The device type we are focusing on is uh, on R, virtual block, and virtual SCSI, and PCI device assignment. Each device type have some configuration. So there are 11, oh, sorry. There are 11 configurations. I will explain each configuration in this order. First device type is virtual block. I use this kind of figure uh, from this slide to uh, explain and compare these configurations. Virtual block is a power virtualized disk, and it is shown as 3D devices in Linux case. To make host device visible to guest OS, QM device layer, uh, virtual block in the QM device layer work together with a virtual block driver in the block layer in the guest kernel. Maximum number of this is limited by maximum number of PCI devices because a uh, virtual block device occupies one PCI device in the guest kernel. So the maximum number is 32. And virtual block is improving performance with virtual block train and DIO based IO. The detail will be uh, explained by uh, Mr. Koa from IBM. Oh, yes, thank you. And I will go into uh, go to your session <laughs> to see detail. Okay, let's move on to the next. And virtual block has uh, three configurations depending on the backend device. We can attach device, uh, file as the disk and block as disk and room as room. And the point in this slide is SCSI command from guest reaches to trace only when attached as room. So only this configuration. In other configuration, SCSI command is blocked by the uh, QM device layer and returns errors to guest OS. And I summarize how to configure in the below table. Next, I'd like to explain about battery SCSI. Virtual SCSI has three types of configuration. QM target, PIO target, and LibI SCSI. QM target and LIO target is working as target, and the difference between them are whether they are working in user space or kernel space. LibI SCSI is working as a iSCSI initiator and it, talk, uh, it directly talks to trade. I will explain this configuration in detail from the next slide. First configuration 
of battery SCSI is QM target. First, I will explain about the battery SCSI. Battery SCSI is power battery SCSI transport working under the SCSI module and gets to see this device as SCSI device. Therefore, it is shown as SD device in Linux test. As for QM target, it is user space target. Just as same as battery block, battery SCSI with QM target has three types of configuration. Attaching of file and attaching of block and attaching of spoon. SCSI command from get reaches to storage only when attached as room. In other configuration, emulated result will be returned by the QM device layer. So guest will see the result, uh, emulated result from uh, QM layer. So SCSI command from guest does not reach to the storage. In file space and block space. And I also summarize the configure how to configure this uh, configuration in this table. The third configuration for battery SCSI, uh, no, the second configuration for battery SCSI is a real target. The characteristic of a battery SCSI is same to the QM target. And the difference is real target is working as a kernel space target. And it uses Leo as backend. Leo supports following back storage, block, file I.O., C SCSI, and RAM disk. As for SCSI command capability, I'm sorry, uh, I haven't uh, evaluated yet enough, but as far as I uh, test it, by attaching as block, emulated result return to guess. So I was, no, uh, SCSI command is not read to Race with uh, block. C SCSI is passed through SCSI, therefore it is expected to work well, but I haven't created the configuration with C SCSI, so I haven't tested yet. If anyone have information about it, please share with me. The third configuration for battery of SCSI is DBI SCSI. DBI SCSI is iSCSI initiator, user space iSCSI initiator, therefore it only supports iSCSI. QEMU directly talk to iSCSI storage, therefore host does not see guest disk. As for SCSI command capability, SCSI command from guest reach to storage in this configuration. I've explained uh, battery block and battery SCSI, and this is the last configuration, PCI device assignment. PCI device assignment has two configurations, legacy and VFIO. Both legacy and VFIO assign PCI device to guest. And the host PCI devices dedicated to one guest, therefore the number of guests is limited to the number of PCI devices. As for SCSI command capability, SCSI command from guest reaches to storage in both legacy and VFIO configuration. 
this is the summary of SCSI command capability. I have explained 11 configuration with virtual block, virtual SCSI, and PCI device assignment. Of all 11 configurations, only five configuration can uh, issue SCSI commands to trace. The configuration are virtual block with room, virtual SCSI with QM target with room, and virtual SCSI with DVI SCSI, and PCI device assignment with both legacy and PSIO. In the next chapter, we will see SCSI command capabilities deeper only with configuration marked as yes in above table. The current status of these features. I have set e three evaluation I oh sorry. I have set three evaluation items from the requirement explained in chapter one. First item is whether SCSI command reach to trace in the requirement one. And the second item is whether unique initiator ID is assigned from requirement two. And third item is whether SCSI command return to return proper result. I evaluated these items with five configurations explained in the last chapter. From next slide, I will share what problems remain in which configuration. First evaluation item is whether SCSI command reach to trace. There is a problem in permission check. There is a permission check in host kernel when get SCSI command is issued here virtual block or virtual SCSI with QM target. The permission check is consists of three checks. First check is cap whether QM process has cap shift row IO, a capability to row IO. If but manage KVM guest run as QM user, so it lacks cap shift row IO. And second check is whether SCSI command is read OK command. And third check is whether SCSI command is write OK command and the process has write permission. Inquiry and report LUN SCSI command is read OK command. So it is allowed to issue even when cap, uh, QM does not have cap shift row IO. However, persistent reservation and write chain is not read OK command nor write OK command. So it is not allowed to issue SCSI command if QM process does not have cap shift row IO. Therefore, some SCSI commands such as persistent reservation and write chain are blocked by this check unless KVM is running as root user. To solve this issue, following patches has been submitted by Mr. Paolo Bonzini since 2012. There are many discussions about this topic. However, neither of them has been matched yet. The concept of these patches is to introduce a flag and prev SGIO to allow non-root users to issue SCSI commands. The concept is very simple. Introducing unprev SGIO, and if this flag is set, all SCSI command can issue to the trace. And this flag can be set 
per disk by using six FS interface. If this kernel path is mad, KVM guest running as QM user will be able to configure to issue any SCSI command to Stray. One of the reasons why this, these patches have not been merged yet is it is still under discussion on how to avoid opcode overlap problem. Let me explain about this problem. Different device class share same opcode. For example, these subchannel SCSI commands share the same opcode 0x42 with unmap for this. It is, there is no problem in using only in on host. However, if it is used in guest, there is a problem because in the guest, it is intended as read subchannel, but interrupted in, uh, interrupted as unmap in host, destructive command might pass through it to host from guest. To avoid this problem, there is a discussion on implementation, splitting permission check by device class or introducing per device filter without amplitude FGIO. And this discussion still continues. So this uh, kernel path is not matched yet. Next evaluation item is whether unique initiator ID is assigned or not. There is a problem when both guest one and guest two are on the same host and use the same HBA, they share, they share the same initiator ID when the configuration is part of a block or part of a SCSI with QM target. In such a condition, exclusive access is not guaranteed because Trace cannot see which guest issues a persistent reservation SCSI command because both uh, persistent reservation from both guests is come from the same initiator ID. There is already solution with NPIV. NPIV is N-port virtualization, and this can assign virtual ID in the host kernel. By using NPIV, we can assign different initiator ID, and we can pass these devices to guests. So we can assign unique initiator ID to each guest, therefore we can use a persistent reservation properly. For your information, with libi SCSI or PCI device assignment, exclusive access is guaranteed because initiator IDs are unique with these configurations. Let me explain with this these figures. Left hand side figure shows virtual SCSI with libi SCSI. And right hand side slide shows PCI device assignment. With libi SCSI, we can assign different initiator ID by using uh, this uh, libi SCSI initiator. Therefore, persistent reservation is issued from different initiator ID. As for PCI device assignment, PCI device assignment needs to dedicate host devices, HBA, to each guest. Therefore, different initiator ID is assigned 
to each case. So the unique initiator ID is guaranteed in this configuration. The last evaluation item is Bezel's SCSI command return proper result. There is a problem with part value block. Report elements returns the list of elements, including elements which are not assigned to the guest. Let me explain in this video. I assume a configuration with three rooms to one HDA, and one of the room is assigned to the guest. Report LUN SCSI command is a SCSI command which can return the list of LUNs that get uh, that OSP. If the SCSI command is issued from guest uh, is issued from host, trace returns three LUNs. It is a uh, expected behavior. However, if Report LUN is issued from guest. Part value block in QM device layer just pass through the SCSI command and return the result to guest. Therefore, guest gets the result, the list of LUN that host sees. It is not expected behavior because guest only sees the device attached to the guest. On the other hand, part of your SCSI can return the proper result by returning emulated result depending on the SCSI command. So part of your SCSI case, part of your SCSI can return the result, emulated result <coughs> in the QM layer. So only one LU is return to the guest. Therefore, part A block needs emulation function to return proper results for particular SCSI commands such as report LUN. This is a summary of my presentation. Enterprise systems require SCSI commands in virtualized environments. KVM has some configuration which can issue SCSI commands to trace from guests. However, each configuration has some restrictions. Virtual block and virtual SCSI with QM target cannot handle persistent reservation and write chain if it is not running at root user. And it also requires MTIV to assign unique HD, uh, unique WWN. And battery block has problem in report LUN. Battery SCSI with DVI SCSI and PCI device assignment can properly handle all SCSI commands and can assign unique WWN. However, they have restriction. It, I think it is very big restriction. Part of SCSI with DVI SCSI can only handle iSCSI. And PCI device assignment, the number of guests is limited in this configuration. So for as long as this restriction arose, user can choose Part of SCSI with DVI SCSI or PCI device assignment. However, some user will feel, uh, some user cannot accept this, this restriction. Like a user who want to use fiber channel or who want to use many guests to use HA cluster or write chain SCSI command. So, for these users, they need persistent reservation or write chain 
discuss this one to be fixed in a, <laughs> to be fixed. Feature work. There are three feature work. First one is to allow QM user to issue persistent reservation and write them proper, proper permission check in host kernel if needed. Second one is to make report LUN return proper result with virtual airflow. An emulation function for report LUN is required. required. Third one is to make SCSI command capability of virtual SCSI with real target clear, evaluation is needed for virtual SCSI with real target. Any questions? Go back to the slide. But a SCSI with a QM target and five base. <coughs> and this one. And security is the question again. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Internal target and As far as I tested, uh, I can't uh, issue SCSI command to try it. But uh, I expect that uh, tSCSI is passed through, so it can work well. But I can't test well. OK. Talking about this, this one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. There, there is reverse style interface, but 
kernel side in each instance is, is missing. So question or comment? <laughs> Not yet, but I will. Thank you very much.